They're about 65 run to 35 pass, so uh, they are quite different. This is not to say that they can't throw it and throw it well because they can certainly do that. They got awfully big people up front. I haven't seen anybody get to their quarterback on a pass this year. Now, we're not going to see Bernard Hawk anymore, I understand, but uh, they've still got a pretty good quarterback. Well, they do. They've got two of them. Uh, last week against Grambling, and they were off last week, uh, as so many people seem to be before they play <laughs> us. Uh, they went to number 11. Number 12 had been their regular quarterback, and uh, really they should have beaten Grambling maybe two touchdowns. But they had some untimely penalties, uh, some unusual situations that... Uh, for instance, uh, they were ahead in the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, Grambling lined up to kick a field goal and missed it, but they were offside, and that give, gave them uh, another series, and they went on in to score the winning touchdown. So they're a good football team, and as I watch them uh, warm up here, and as we dodge these punts on the sideline, <laughs> they look very much like the Washington Redskins to me, uh, the way they dress and their physical uh, appearance. They're, they're really a physical football team. And what have we done to get ready for them? <laughs> uh, well, SOS, the same old stuff. Uh, we, we've got to do what we can do and uh, hope that that'll be good enough. All right, good luck today. Thank you, Bill. All right, we'll be back with our first half highlight right after we do this. Possession, but the DSC defense led by Larry Boone kept the Wildcats out of the end zone. Danny Durham came within an eyelash of intercepting this Greg Ross pass at the goal line. Watch again from behind the end zone and see how close Danny came to having this one for his very own. And you'll notice Denny go to Frustration City. So for the second time of the afternoon, Manny Manolas came on to boot a field goal. Only this time, the results were much better for his team. It was true blue, and Bethune Cookman led 3-0. But the Eagles really wouldn't know how to act if they had the lead first anyway, and it was time to go to work. Tracy got the Eagle Express airborne with a flight connection to Frank Johnson. 16 yards resulted. And on second and seven from the enemy 45, Tracy kept the air lanes crowded with this 16-yarder to Herman Barron. And just as sure as these guys protect our lives on the highways, Tracy Ham was moving the Eagles down the road to victory as you watch a sideline perspective of that last pass to Barron. Tracy then reeled off 14 more yards of this little dance around the right side down to the BC 15 as the first quarter came to a close. After swapping into the field on the second play of the second period, third and seven from the 12, Tracy performed his match. A 12-yard roll out to the right and on into glory. That gave the Eagles a 7-3 lead, which lasted exactly three plays. Count them. Ross moved the Wildcats 16 yards near midfield with this aerial to Remy Watson. Fullback Andre Harper then knifed his way through the middle for a 21-yard pickup down to the Eagle 31. And then the textbook perfect touchdown pass, a thing of beauty, as Ross rifled this missile with deadly accuracy to Remy Watson and a 10-7 Wildcat lead. But as we've learned this season, a trailing eagle is a mad as a wet hen eagle. And it took a defensive play to give Southern the proper motivation. First, Andre Harper met the GSC wrecking crew led by Larry Boone. Then came the biggie. Ross, working out of the shotgun, went to pass. He intended for Reggie Wyndham to catch it, but linebacker Robert Underwood read it perfectly and hijacked this flight and took off on a 24-yard return. Watch it again from the GSC secondary as Underwood does his stuff before the home crowd. And the Eagles went to work, eating up most of the real estate needed for the score when Tracy pitched to fast Frank Johnson, who turned the right end and got 17 yards closer to the end zone using some nice moves down the sideline. The final 11 yards was taken care of by the Swainsboro Flash, Gerald Harris, who took exception to being shoved long after it was necessary, but then said, nice kitty. Look at it one more time and notice the superb blocking along the line of scrimmage by Charles Cochran, Peanut Carter, and Dennis Franklin to spring Gerald for the TD. And faster than Bethune Cookman could say, did anybody get the license number of that truck? The Eagle defense had forced the Wildcats to give up the ball again. On third down, Ross tried to hit Kevin Finney, but the ball arrived about the same time as Danny Durham. And Durham won that battle with no sweat at all. But following a BC punt, the Eagles were back on the warpath. And one of the more unusual plays of the day, Tracy pitched to Frank Johnson, who drops it. And without missing a stride, picks it back up 
cuts across the grain, splits the Wildcat defense, and turned a potential disaster into a New Year's Eve party. A sensational 45-yard run, breaking two more tackles and getting all the way down to the enemy 30. Yes, folks, you can watch this one again from the GSC bench. The Eagles are now cooking with gas. Butane on the front burner, and Tracy burned him again with this flight to Monty Sharp that got the Eagles 25 more yards to the BC5. Watch this one again from the press box perspective and notice a nifty move Monty makes to duck a defender and get even more yardage. Then, guess who? That's right, Gerald Harris got all that was left on the next play and the Eagles were soaring up 21-10 to 10, as a near-capacity crowd cheered their approval. But stick around, offensive buffs, because you ain't seen nothing yet. But before we go any further with this one, let's have a little history lesson, Eagle fans. Until yesterday, the longest pass play in Georgia Southern history was this 75-yarder from Tracy Ham to Monty Sharp in last year's championship semifinals against the University of Northern Iowa at Cedar Falls. But records are made to be broken, and so it was when Air Tracy got cranked up yesterday on the second play after getting the ball back once more. Working from his own 23, he hit Tony Belzer, who'd gotten behind all defenders, had a good two steps on the last chance, and was gone on a 77-yard TD for the record book. Afterwards, Tony told us he's happy with his performance and his role this season. All year, and all years before, Monty's been the primary charge, and I think God has taken a lot of pressure off him, you know. And I feel pretty good about that. He builds up my confidence. So, uh, so where they put me in the game, I'll have my confidence up so I can perform up to my ability. I play good under pressure. <laughs> I, I play good under pressure. When things get tough, and, you know, I just get heated up inside, you know, and I really want to get out there and do well. So they know that. The coaches know that. And they put me in on situations like that. And all that's left to be told about the first half in this one is a Tim Foley field goal with four seconds to go to put the Eagles up 31-10 to 10 going into the locker room. We'll be back to talk about Georgia Southern soccer after this. Well, it didn't take long for the second half scoring of this clam bake to get started. On the second play from scrimmage, Ham pitched to Ricky Harris for a three-yard gain. And as we've come to expect, Tracy Ham's quarterback sneaks can be as deadly as they are beautiful to behold. And the 14,000 on hand were beholden on this one to the tune of 55 yards, untouched, and a 38-10 lead. The Bethune Cookman wasn't about to throw in the towel, and this eight-yard pass from Greg Ross to Juan Washington got him inside GSC territory. Four plays later, the Wildcats were in the end zone. As Ross hits his favorite target, Remy Watson, in the corner, and just like the coaches draw him on the blackboard in a 38-17 GSC advantage. It was two possessions later before Southern could score again. A pair of almost identical pitch-outs to Frank Johnson got him close. One to the right for 14 yards to the BC 37. Then, as center Jay Marshall got the play started snapping it to Tracy, a pitch to Frank around the left end for 13 more as the fans got the wave started at Paulson Stadium. Then on the ensuing play, a pitch around the right side. Only this time it was Ricky Harris handling the load. Ricky did just fine. He got it all and says it's nice to be getting the ball some more. Today's game was was the object to, to kind of get you a little more on the corners. Was a, you th think they were expecting that run up the middle? No, they weren't expecting the run up the middle. But uh, like they were playing us man to man, and we had to pitch. They were taking care of Tracy and Gerald, so that left the pitch for one time to be open. So we got it out there quite a bit. All right, I guess you feel good about uh, getting a chance to get your hands on the ball a little more. I do. I really feel good about running the ball, rushing it more than four times a game, and I'm I'm looking forward to rushing it some more next week. A lot of times I know that uh, you guys don't get the credit that you deserve. We talk about the offensive linemen that don't get the credit, but you know you don't have the you don't have the uh, the play off when you when you're not carrying the ball there's some there's some downfield blocking to do or backfield blocking that most people don't realize and, uh, i mean it's a lot goes on in our offense to make everything work for trace to get a long run or jail to get a long run like for me to carry out the full fake to the, all the way to the max so that my guy will be on me and get him a chance to break a long one well by now georgia southern was scoring when they felt like it southern in hospitality was running rampant watch the impression baxley sammy williams does of a freight train on this play to pressure greg ross and after nearly putting ross in his grave sammy was kind enough to resurrect him nice play and they were loving it at paulson stadium yesterday as the third quarter came to a close the eagles were back in the end zone gerald harris back up gary miller doing the honors 
I mean, the line is doing an excellent job. And then plus, uh, just by watching Gerald and then, you know, staying in touch with, you know, what's going on in the game through him and watching him on the field, I mean, makes it easier for me when I go in. I already, you know, I'm, I feel like I've already been in there. This is a much more mature football team this year. Not only did you guys win the national championship last year, it doesn't look like you've lost your hunger or enthusiasm, which a lot of teams do. Yeah, I, I think everybody this year, I think I think we want it again. You know, the, the fight is there. We want it. I, I, I think, seriously, you know, I, we're not going to lay down for anybody, I don't believe. Bethune-Cookman's frustrations continued in the fourth quarter when they saw a nice drive die in the end zone as Terry Young intercepted a Greg Ross pass. And here it is one more time from the sideline perspective. Then Terry and Chris Aiken engaged in the age-old ritualistic interception dance and boogie. And for those thinking about what to do after the game, ideas just appeared in thin air. Scoring didn't stop, though. The Wildcats got a lucky break when Ken Burnett, now at quarterback for Southern, fumbled trying to sneak it on first down. And despite Taz Dixon just hanging all over him, B.C.'s new quarterback, Anthony Thomas, fired this TD pass to who else? Remy Watson. That deserves another look. No doubt about it, Taz did his job. Thing is, he just can't defensive play this perfect. Well, the Wildcats got the ball back one more time before game's end and marched it to the end zone to make the score look closer than it really was as Thomas finds James Edwards for a 17-yard game. Then a toss to Mr. Touchdown, Remy Watson, for the afternoon's final tally. We knew it was going to be an onside kick, but the Eagles recovered it. Ross Warsham sure hands getting this one, and GSC simply ran out the clock for a 52-31 victory. And Herc will be back in a jiffy to talk about this game and next week's contest with East Carolina after this.